Hello, it is 5 a.m. in Washington. It's 1.30 p.m. in Kabul. I'm Monita Rajpal. And I'm Zane Virgie. You're watching World One live from Ten London. Ten years after U.S. forces went into Afghanistan, President Barack Obama will today announce he's pulling thousands of troops out of the country. A source in the U.S. Congress tells CNN 30,000 soldiers will be withdrawn by the end of 2012 out of a current strength of about 100,000. It starts with 10,000 troops going home over the next six months. Kate Walsh is in the country. He joins us now live from Bagram Air Base. Nick. in this town where the Taliban has taken over. Is this a sign of uh, things to come or is this a sign of NATO's worst fears? Well, I think we should just point out NATO's reaction to images like this. They're very clear that Taliban role in these areas is fleeting, that they don't have a consistent presence. The question now them. is, has the U.S. achieved its goals in Afghanistan? Well, it's a yes and a no. On the plus side, let's begin there. One of the main goals for entering the country was to hunt down Osama bin Laden and cripple his terror network. Almost 10 years after the 9-11 attacks, the U.S. did succeed in finding and killing the al-Qaeda leader. As for his terror network. It no longer has safe havens or training camps in Afghanistan, but insurgency continues to be a problem in the South. When it comes to the security situation in the, let's try that, in the country, well, hopefully it'll come up at some point, as U.S. troops pull out its responsibilities passed to the Afghan National Security Forces. The government promised to recruit and train them for this day. Now, the Army and the police have hit their number targets, but many are concerned the recruits aren't up to the job just yet. Another major concern for the administration is drugs. NATO forces have waged a war on drugs in Afghanistan, destroying poppy fields and offering farmers incentives to switch to other crops. Now, in spite of that, opium production has risen dramatically and uh, it is peaking in 2007 when it covered almost 200,000 hectares. Nearly all of that is in the least secure provinces in the south and in the west. Now, when it comes to um, the other other developments within the country, the toppling of the Taliban was supposed to improve the lives of ordinary Afghans and developing women's rights. There has been progress there. School enrollment has increased from around a million in 2001. All boys to more than six million, including more than two million girls. More than a quarter of the seats in the lower house of parliament are reserved for women. Zane. A cloud of volcanic ash has wreaked havoc on air travel in the southern hemisphere for days. Now it appears the cloud may just be thinning, but it's not all good news for stranded air travelers. Sky News Australia's Gemma Vaness joins us now from Sydney Airport to fill us in. And Gemma, the last time CNN spoke to you, there was really no one at the airport behind you. Is that a different story today? It certainly is, Moneta. So uh, we had the airline, the airlines, I should say, resume their services about five hours ago here in Sydney. Forget two bailouts. Greece might need three or even four. That's according to one British politician. Alistair Darling was Chancellor of the Exchequer, in other words, the Economy Minister, for three years in the government of Gordon Brown. He was part of the talks leading up to the first Greek bailout. He joins us now from Westminster. Sir, thank you very much for being with us. Is, is it really an option to perhaps uh, opt out of uh, helping Greece? Well, I don't think it is. The point that I was making is that if you look at the record over the last year, uh, the Eurozone has acted often too late and uh, often in a way that just isn't going to work. Question though, if the fundamental problems are not being resolved and the, the problems are intrinsic within Greece, isn't perhaps letting it go into default be the perhaps more rational and even radical uh, response and answer to this, to let it actually go into default and then start from the bottom up? Otherwise, uh, bailing it out is more like a Band-Aid solution, is it not? Well, let me put it this way. If Greece were to default, the idea that you could contain that to Greece alone, I think, is fanciful. Well, the thing is, Greece's own deputy prime minister had said last year that, and he said, quote, we ate the money together, and he was blaming the people and the politicians for ruining the economy and for having not managed it properly. Does this not then signify or highlight the uh, intrinsically flawed nation of this single currency? Well, I think there's two issues there. One is that, um, you know, you are right that Greece has a long history of problems, of reforms that were never made or never seen through statistics that people found uh, to be right, incredible. Darling, thank you so much. Thank you.
This is World One live from London. It's set up so that they can <laughs> that they can help them come to terms with that bad piece of news. Now I don't know who gets to vet all this and who decides line? who's Hi, beautiful or I, not. You I've know? been told I'm not pretty enough. Yeah. Is that what they said? Well, basically, you know. And how are you supposed to know actually if you're posting the right picture or not? You but know, you whether know someone is beautiful. I could think or... someone's beautiful. Someone else can think differently. Well, I think beauty is in the eye of the beer holder. Well, that's always the case. <laughs> that's always the case. Uh, uh, Let's so turn over places. to the <laughs> So many places I could go with that. As we segue over to the <laughs> Yes, I will. Um, Don't worry, you you're very beautiful. <laughs> In the eye of the beer holder? Okay. Cheers. Sorry. You have some breaking news. I do have some breaking news Hot from the, the world of football. Just happened, I can tell you, that Chelsea have just confirmed André Villas-Boas as their new manager. The club from the Premier League has just released a statement in the last few minutes. And this is what... Now because they've got a roof. Mm. But all those other courts out there, it's looking again like a beautiful London June day. sunny <laughs> London day. No, no, no it's looking much. horrible out there. Well, we think that the new Chelsea uh, manager could join that website. Yeah? <laughs> could be part of that website, the Beautiful People website. Yeah, you wouldn't veto him? Nope, not at all. Okay. Not at all. That's just my two cents. Well, it's, it's a valid opinion. <laughs> all right, Pedro. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right. Um, it, is <laughs> it has already been a historically damaging monsoon season. Back. This is World One, live from London. We're coming up on 6 a.m. in New York, noon in Berlin, 7 p.m. in Tokyo. A newspaper photographer has been shot in the leg in a second night of violence between Protestants and Catholics on the streets of Belfast, Northern Ireland. Up to 700 rioters clashed with police, throwing petrol bombs, fireworks and bricks, and all three people were hospitalized with gunshot wounds. Senior international correspondent Dan Rivers is in Northern Ireland. He joins us now live with the latest. Dan. From the team here on World One, I'm Zane Vergy. I'm Monita Rajpal. Thank you for watching CNN.